Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today we're gonna to be creating a NAS just using Docker. So let's get started. Now, if you guys are new to the Pi Hosted series, I will leave a link right here in the top left corner for you guys so you guys can follow along. I will be adding a container that will actually allow for Samba sharing through our Raspberry Pi. Now, there are many ways to set this up, but Primarily, most NASs use this Samba just to share through the network for Microsoft Windows. Actually, Mac OS could support it as well, so it actually works for everything. Now, installing this Docker is not the best means because there are limitations to this. While it can use the full Samba network and the configurations, it just makes it a lot easier for you to set it up just almost one click. So if you guys are needing a quick NAS or a quick network sharing, uh, yeah, this method is for you. So to begin, we're gonna jump over to our desktop and we are in our portainer environment. I am up to 25 containers now and I am actually gonna be doing a video on reviewing everything on these 25 containers. Uh, resources, where it's up to, how is it running on my Raspberry Pi 4. So that will be the next video on the Pi Hosted series because we're about that time where I'm using my Raspberry Pi with 25 containers. What is it doing? So. What we're gonna do now is hop over to App Template. And again, if you follow the series, you would have my version of the App Template, which have, I think, over 100, 200, I don't know, a lot. It just keeps going. And I keep adding to this, so we have more and more resources as we go along. So the first thing we need to install is uh, Samba. I think it starts with a D, right over here somewhere. Um, to make it a little bit easier, I'll just type it out. Uh, here you go, I was wrong. It was created by D person. But yeah, it's Samba. Now in here, you can just deploy the container and it'll work. But if you wanna go through some of the settings, we can. Now, the name of this is gonna be Samba. We're gonna be using the network bridge. We keep everything here the same, but what we do need to change is user. Now we can retain it to guest slash guest. That's the username and password. So it doesn't mean it's anonymous and lets you go through. You do still need to type in the username password as guest and guest. But this is where you can actually change or add different users. For now, we're gonna keep it as guests and guests. And over here, we have your share. So it's portainer, share, yes, no. That's the name of the portainer. So you can actually name this to whatever you want. I'm gonna leave it as portainer. And the file that we're gonna be sharing is slash share. Now, I'm gonna deploy this container, but we're not done yet because we can actually go in and modify some of the settings just to point to the correct directory. So as of now, uh, that actually just points to the downloads directory in Portainer. So if you want to leave it there, that is perfectly fine. I'm going to go here. It does take a while to start. Um, it does start, but it just takes a while. Now, if I go over to duplicate and edit and then head down to, where is it? Volumes. We are pointing to the host of Portainer slash downloads. Now, if you guys have an extra hard drive, and you want to mount it just to share that hard drive, you will have to change this location to wherever you mounted that hard drive. So while this is booting up, uh, I'll probably show you guys that. I'm gonna pop over to my terminal and make this a little bit bigger. We're gonna SSH into our Pi hosted. And in here, I actually have hard drive that I separately mounted, which is this 240 gigabyte hard drive. Well, I have a, another one hooked up to it. And what we could do is ls slash dev, and you should be able to see something that's SDB or SDA. Actually, it's SDB. SDA is taken up from the internal hard drive that I'm using right now. So we know SDB is what we need, but there's no partitions to it. It's a blank, brand new hard drive. So what I could do here is F disk dev SDB. Now be very sure that the hard drive you're plugging in doesn't have partitions like this. So SDA, SD1, SDA2, that means it's being used, it's got two partitions. SDB does not have any partitions, so you know it's fresh. So what I'm gonna do is, whoops, sudo that, and get into the SDB. And from here, we could actually just press help. And what we want is to create a new partition. So we're gonna do N to create a new partition. We're gonna make it primary. One partition is fine. Uh, first sector, and we wanna use all of the space, so don't touch anything, you'll just use the rest of the space. And that is it. It created a new partition of 223 gigabytes, and it's Linux. You could, whatever hard drive you have, if it's one terabyte, you could use that as well. So now I'm gonna hit W to write the table. 
And now we are all set with this. If I do ls slash dev slash sd, actually sd star, you will see now sdb has one partition, okay? So from here, what we can do is make file system ext4 slash dev sdb1. We wanna format it so it's, oops, sudo again. We wanna format it so it uh, formats it to ext4. It's gonna create the journaling system, everything else, and then we're allowed to mount it afterwards. So what this means is that everything we do here will be changed because we are gonna be changing this directory to something else. Unless you want to mount the hard drive to portainer slash download. So everything you download will be on the new hard drive instead of the SD card or whatever partitions you have in there. You could do that as well. But for now, we are gonna mount it to, let's see. There is already a mount folder, but I am using that. So where I'm just gonna do sudo make dir, and I'm just gonna call this folder, hmm, share. That seems easy enough. So we're gonna have this new folder called share. And now to test that the hard drive works, we could do sudo mount slash dev slash sdb1 to slash share. And with no errors, that means it's gonna be working. So if we type in the word mount, it will show you that dev sdb is on share. And from here, all we have to do is just change this to share. And then I'm gonna deploy the container. Replace that with the new information. And it's gonna take a while to boot up, so I'm gonna let that go. But while that is happening, I'm, I know I'm switching back and forth, but we're gonna now auto mount the hard drive. So every time when it boots up with the system, it'll know to mount it to share. So BLK ID will give you the UUID that you need. Uh, this is SDA, SDB. So with this being said, I am gonna do CD, no, LS slash dev slash disk by UUID and it's going to give me two disks, actually three because I have two up here and then a third one. So what I'm matching up right now is that the 6693, which is this one right here, is already SDA2. Then this one, UUID, the 37E2, which is this one right here, is my boot partition. So the remaining factor would be the 2367. So I'm going to copy that because that's what I'm going to be using. And I am gonna nano sudo nano etc slash fs tab, or my friend likes to say f stab. From here, we could do uuid equals, and we paste that uuid line so it knows that that's going to be the hard drive. This way, if you plug in other stuff like another hard drive, you won't be mounting the wrong thing. So with the uuid, you're going to be mounting the proper drive. So from here, we just do slash share, and then we could, oops, it's not space, tab slash share, tab, the ext4, okay, that's the type, tab, defaults, tab, zero, zero. I'm gonna save this. Now, every time when it boots up the system, it will actually mount that to the share folder, this way, your NAS will always have that hard drive attached to it. So at this rate, this should be started by now. I'm just gonna hit F5 to refresh it. Uh, let's pop on to 25 containers and Samba should be oh, up on top, right here. And it is started, it's got the ports correct, it's healthy. So what that means now is if you got a Windows machine or a Linux machine like mine, you can now go to other locations and search for portainer. If it doesn't show up here, you could also do smb slash slash 192.168.105 to the IP address of your uh, SMB. So now it's gonna ask me for username and password, which we gave guest, guest, connect. Did I do it wrong? Is it supposed to be two slashes? So I did slash portainer, I had to add that word. Registered user, guest, guest, connect. And there we go. This is our drive that is in there. So to test this, I can make a new full, actually, let me just make a new file. Well, I can't make a new folder, test. I created a new folder called test. And if I go into the terminal, since I'm still connected to a Raspberry Pi, I could go CD into share, and there should be a folder called test, which is what I created. Now, if I'm gonna do touch file, so I'm just creating a thing called file, 
if I refresh this, now it's here. So basically, we are now communicating and we have our own little NAS with its own little username and password. Again, if you wanted to add more stuff to this and change the settings, uh, I definitely recommend checking out his site. Uh, if you go over to App Templates and go back to Samba, here is the URLs for his documents. So from here, you can add, he'll show you guides to adding more usernames, specific shares, uh, if you only want to share one folder, specific permissions. You could get pretty detailed into setting this up by just adding those environments that you need. Um, if you want to add more usernames instead of guess guess, you can also go back into duplicate and edit and go into environment. And from here, you see how it says user. You literally just have to add a new environment and then call this user. And you could change this to Don, Don. And now you have a new username and password and a new user. So you could do a lot of stuff through the environment, but read his documentation if you want more detailed stuff. But for the default setup, you basically have your NAS up. Anyway, that is it for me, guys. If you guys have any questions about this, hit me down in the comments below. It is a little bit quick on this, but then again, you guys could always slow down the video just to see the steps I did. But basically what we did is install the Docker, mounted a new hard drive, made sure it will come back alive when it boots, and then we checked the connection and it was able to connect to our NAS. If you guys enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. If you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is gonna be out. And then say my nerd cave, Hack till it hurts.